Good morning, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here, live from Weather Trends 360 Studios here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. According to meteorologists, fall arrived this uh, past weekend, so we're day four into fall. Uh, thought we'd talk about our winter outlook again. Little had a lot of hits about that last week, uh, so we'll do that here at the end. Uh, but here, real quick, the next two weeks, see this big blob of cold weather building into Canada, Western Canada, the Pacific Northwest. One more shot next week of hot weather exits, and then we may get into a, a colder fall pattern. Um, lots of tropical activity to, to talk about here. We'll look at that a little more detail here in a bit, but things are getting pretty hot here in the Gulf and the Atlantic, so we'll be look, tracking that. Uh, this week, again, 4 through 10 September, kind of cool, uh, high temperatures, uh, a lot of rain-induced cooling out here. Um, again, see this kind of conveyor belt of moisture of four or five inches. Obviously, wherever Gordon makes landfall, we're going to have, you know, five, six, seven, eight inches or more. Uh, tidal surge maybe in toward New Orleans and Gulfport, Mississippi, and Mobile, Alabama bays being on the right side of the hurricane, so something to watch there. Overall this week we say it's the 11th warmest in 30 years, kind of average uh, for the U.S. as a whole, uh, but again, number one wettest, thanks in part to this tropical activity. Jumping ahead to next week, 11th through September, as we're getting to mid-September, again, this is that last big uh, kind of hot period, and then you start to see that cold weather coming in the Pacific Northwest that'll eventually sweep across the country the third, fourth week of September. So latter half of September looks definitely much cooler than this front half. Again, maybe another system we'd have to watch here uh, next week. One model tries to bring in a tropical type system right into the Texas Houston area where certainly they don't want to have a repeat of what happened last year. But uh, overall the week we'd say is the fifth warmest in 30 years, warmest in about 13 years. So it's a warm mid-September mid here. And again, 10th wettest of the past 30 and about, again, that make it the wettest in nine years. Uh, real quick on the hurricane season, uh, picking up steam here. Again, we're getting to the peak. September 10th is a historical peak and that extends into about early October. We've got Gordon, again, probably going to hit Gulfport, Mississippi area this evening, uh, late tonight. Um, Tropical Storm Florence is a uh, may become a minimal hurricane. Have to see. It's heading in the general direction of Bermuda. May have some impact on the East Coast, TBD on that. Um, some models try to get it pretty close, but this far out, it's kind of chaos. But uh, certainly something to watch with Florence. After that, we have three more waves coming off Africa. So next week, by this time next week or middle of next week, we may actually be up to Joyce, number 10th, named Storm. We'll see. Several systems off Africa. And then we hear this one's going to be a whopper, number 11, Kirk. Um, so uh, we made the list this year. Uh, two systems in the West Pacific, uh, mostly fish storms going uh, well north and east of uh, Hawaii, so no big deal there. Maybe another system forming off Mexico. We have a Typhoon Jebby uh, moving through Osaka, Japan as we speak. And then maybe a huge typhoon possible for Taiwan late next week. So a lot of activity in the tropics to be watching, and we'd expect that this time of year. Uh, folks, we're really interested, we had to say, with our win long winter outlook uh, last uh, uh, week, so we thought we'd talk about that a more. Uh, real quick, the Captain Kirk thing here. I don't, if you're under 35, you have no clue who that general is. <laughs> uh, I had some quite a few meetings with him uh, as a young lieutenant at MacDill Air Force Base back in the 80s, early 90s. I knew him before he was a famous general in Desert Storm. Um, so again, kind of some of the impetus for our uh, inspiration for our technology some 20, 29 years ago, so I'm dating myself at this point. Um, and I always say the real Captain Kirk versus that imposter on TV. Love this guy, kind of the inspiration for why as a kid I got into science and technology and weather. Um, so again, had the pleasure of meeting him. Uh, but again, I say I'm the real Captain Kirk, he's that imposter on TV. We showed this last week in our video about the winter outlook overall. So it's the coldest in five for the U.S. overall, snowiest in five for the U.S. overall, and wetter than last year. So again, kind of a nor'easter track is what we showed here. Even some good snows where they haven't had much snow out in the Midwest. So they may actually see quite a bit of snow in the areas. You know, Kansas City hasn't seen a lot of snow in, in many years. So certainly out there and then much of the country trending pretty cool. Uh, this is, again, an example of how we can get into much, much more detail than that. So this is, again, I say this is an easy view of the winter outlook. This actually takes us all the way through April. So there's a U.S. trend. So we're kind of right in here right now where we're in this warm period. But then it looks like we get into late September, a cold, cold snap. And then that kind of just continues, you know, brief periods of warm, but you'll see more cold than warm uh, as opposed to the summer where we've had more warm than cold. Um, and that really extends into about the third, uh, sorry, first week of March. So pretty long cold winter once we get cranking here um, uh, through the fall into the winter. And then this is just precip trends for the U.S. overall. So a lot of wet weeks versus a few dry weeks in here. Keep in mind a cold, and we think polar vortex may be the theme of the day as we get into mid-January into February. Um, hear that term again popping up in the media. Uh, even though you may be dry, cold and dry can mean a lot of snow. Uh, dry in terms of the amount of precip, but the snow could certainly be heavy. So again, uh, this is a, we have this all the way down to a city. We're not going to show that here today. 
Uh, but this is the kind of information we'd show in a report, a year-ahead report showing February. Again, we think you're going to be hearing polar vortex, unfortunately, this winter. Um, so load up on your propane and your fire logs and all that kind of good winter stuff because you're probably going to need it this winter. Um, so again, our reports typically for our clients give a lot more detail on snow week by week, you know, again, year ahead. So it's a statistical, statistical 24 climate cycle approach. It's not physics, meteorology that, you know, went to school for Rutgers for that, but doesn't work beyond a couple weeks. Um, one cycle that we could look into is, you know, we factor in about 24 uh, of them. Uh, it's just looking at these ocean temperatures in the in Arctic regions and Hudson Bay and around Greenland are much, much colder, 10 degrees colder at least than last year. That's telling us something. So again, all these waters are very, very cold. That just allows cold air to build quicker. The sooner the cold air builds, hopefully get more snowpack across Eurasia and Canada. That allows the winter to get off to an early start. So building a cold early air mass source up in here in the fall, uh, in part because of these cold water temperatures will help us, we think, have one of the coldest, snowiest winters in five years for the U.S. So again, lots of signs pointing to a uh, interesting winter. Uh, with that said, I'll quote Forrest Gump here and say, that's all I have to say about that. So with that, folks, have a great week. Uh, again, keep your eye on the tropics and we'll be here uh, Monday next week.